On today's episode, we break down some of the news that's been happening, the ride or die segment, Thursday night football, we break down that matchup, and then we jump into the mailbag. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. A little further back than usual. I'm always afraid of frightening somebody. Because yeah, I, I don't want somebody to pull on the podcast, put on the podcast, right. and then crank the volume down, and then you two start talking. Oh, you're and looking out for us. Nah, 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 nah. It'd be I too see. quiet. I see. So I pull back from the microphone. I'm, I'm not perfect. No, I don't do no it every time. No one has ever claimed that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome into the show, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, with you. I uh, just discovered Jason and I wore the same T-shirt today. Yeah, you're looking good, bud. Oh, Thank you. I see you're looking you, good. Man, I see what you did. Yeah, you, you got out in front of it before before you could before jump all I over it. You, it. you betcha. I was I was sitting. You were priming. Yeah, I was like a lion just <laughs> in the savannah. I was ducked down, ready to pounce. We have we just wanted to get dorks. The, the, <laughs> wanted to get the message across. I think we agreed before yeah. the show that we wanted people to withstand some victories this week that's right you know you gotta you you can always withstand victories a, f a phrase that uh, just i don't know if anybody even remembers its inception so go ahead where i Mike. was going was I, th that phrase has not been uttered on this show in many a moon and the shirt I, you can't even get the shirt anymore so you're wearing a collector's edition fantasy footballer's shirt where jason i think was uh, the i think the origin of withstanding victories was you were talking about like if you yes, if I, you have I, a player who is out or something, and you can like hold on to them. Exactly, I was saying it was it was in draft season, yes. and you know if there was going to be a player that was like missing four games, if you can withstand enough victories <laughs> to get to where the player comes back, and you guys jumped all over that. Yeah, because it's yeah, because you said withstanding victory. Right. That's really why and I believe Mike goes. Oh, I can always withstand <laughs> victories. All right, if you want like to, a problem. Uh, I feel like we should put this shirt up for sale for one week. Just is do we have the the, the thing? Anymore? We probably have it somewhere. You can see it at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. But you'll never get one. But you'll never get one. A <laughs> couple of quick reminders before we jump into the show. We will be live on Spotify Live. Oh baby. At six PM Eastern, three PM Pacific. You can follow us on Spotify. You'll be notified when the show goes live. The party room back again, looking at week two matchups. Answering questions, bringing people up on stage to chat with us, and uh, it's going to be a very good yeah. time. And just generalized partying. Yeah, just general party. Yeah, you know what it is. Yeah, I mean, if you've partied, you know, <laughs> you know what that is. Yeah. Uh, Jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community. The Deucers are in the building once again. Brooks is back to a forwards cap. Oh, oh yeah. no! I really don't know what to think about. Can't Loser. go backwards. I can't go backwards every day. Oh, is it just to mix it up? You weren't feeling cool today. Nah, oh, I man. like cool Brooks. He kind of intimidated me. <laughs> yeah, with I all understand. that money and the backwards hat, I was like, "Ooh, yes, sir." He seemed at least one to two feet taller as well. Yes, yes, that's true, and definitely not bald. No, all no, right. There's luscious locks under. The, the back backwards Yeah, because you wouldn't wear a backwards cap. Hat is Jason. now on backwards. Oh, there we go. Oh, look how cool is. that cool dude. I'm looking taller. Yeah. <laughs> Would you ever go backwards cap, Jason? You said you don't wear caps well. Maybe that's maybe I got to try that. Hmm. Backwards? Yeah. Okay. It, it works he, for Brooks. Does he need to go fitted or, or not fitted for the backwards mm. cap? He, Jason seems he might need to do a fitted. I I prefer the 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 backwards snapback, but the the fitted might be the better. I, I prefer the backwards snapback, but that loser I just, <laughs> can't pull it off. I'm trying no, to look I at think the, could, the shape of your head. I was thinking the same thing. Okay. And what comes out if you don't have a fitted, that means you got that little gap area. 
Ooh, I don't. The gap doesn't yeah, the, play uh, well. Yeah, the little for, plume. What, you want a little plume in there? <laughs> and it would be a little plume. <laughs> we can give it a go. Maybe that'll just be my the if wheel you, of shame. The wheel of shame will just be backwards cap. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get into it. Ride or Die, presented by Chevrolet. Well, last week, Jason won this segment. He got two out of three correct. We all missed on DK Metcalf over 55 yards. Yeah, he did. He had seven for 36. What's crazy is if you How told you me. How do seven? That's what I was going to say, that he had seven receptions. I'd be like, oh, so, uh, so, so he I had 150 it. yards. Yeah. And then Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Woof. Two plus passing touchdowns. He had one. Jason uh, was the only one to go against him. He said, die. I said, always bet against Baker. <laughs> and then Clyde Edwards-Alaire, at least 17 opportunities. You would think that Mike would have won here. He said, ride with Clyde. Yeah, who, who finished as the running back six on the week. Because you know, that was like, he's going to have a bunch of opportunities. The Chiefs are going to win. And he was just too efficient on his opportunities and running back six on just 10 of them. He would have had 17 had that game been anything remotely close. Yes. But, of course, Mike is a loser. Yep. Yeah. All right. Week two, ride or die, Brooks. Uh, you put three more predictions together. What's the first one you have for us? All right. First one is Marquise Hollywood Brown. Hollywood! <laughs> At the Raiders this week, will he be a top 15 fantasy wide receiver? In week one, he had six targets, four for 43, and a touchdown. That made him the wide receiver 26. I will say that there was nothing impressive about that offense. In week one, there was nothing. You know, Greg Dorch had a number of targets. Dorch. There was no go-to feeling with Hollywood. Is that fair? I yes. think it was fair. He had a touchdown and was the wide receiver 26. He's not going to be a top 15 wide receiver this week unless he has a touchdown, and he just proved he can – he can have the touchdown and not do it. This is an easy die to me. I I think that uh, the Cardinals offense just looked nearly as bad as their defense. Mike, are you going ride or die here with Hollywood? Uh, it's um, it's die. It was uh, the, the, uh, the the stench of that Arizona Cardinals offense. It's still it's still with me. And until they, I thought, prove, I, I, thought I smelled something. Yeah, there was the Cardinals. Yeah. It's on me. Uh, and, and until that, until they can perfume that away, I will be betting against. They them. say if you're a hundred within a hundred miles of that home stadium, you do have oh, a little yeah. bit of the stench on you. I That's don't just Arizona. I'd love to go against you guys. I don't have the courage this week. The pass rush from the Raiders against the offensive line of Arizona. I'm concerned. I am going to go die. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to go die. No, no, no. I'm going to choose no. the yes. – it's ride or die. Yeah. All right, Brooks, give us a second one. This is a good one. All right, week two, Aaron Jones will have more opportunities than A.J. Dillon versus the Bears on Sunday night. In uh, week one, Aaron Jones had 10 total opportunities, and A.J. Dillon had 16. So I'm going to ride. Mm -hmm. I, think Aaron, I think the pendulum swings back in Aaron Jones's favor. In this game, it's going to be necessary for the Packers to have success. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and ride, Mike. <laughs> Packers country, let's ride. Oh man! So I came they, in. They, they like Coach Lafleur came out and talked about it. If which is always again the one of the funniest things that happens after an NFL game. We got it from Lafleur. We got it from Lovey Smith. Was Basically, like, well, we got to figure out how to get, how to have this player touch the ball more. And the person, it's just very funny when the person in charge of the entire team is the one saying we got to figure this out. And it's it's very easy, head coach. You say, uh, put Aaron Jones in and give him the ball. I think it gets away from you sometimes. I it, clearly it does because it I mean it's it happened to. Andy Reid so many oh, times oh, with Jamal with, Charles. And with Kareem Hunt. It was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I should get him the ball. I came in. So you're both riding with Aaron Jones yep. having more opportunities than A.J. Dillon, which makes sense. He had more snaps already in that game. He just didn't touch the ball more. Um, 
but this was so close to me that because you both went right, I'm going to go die on this. Oh. Um, and, and I think that there is a really easy to argue method for this. This is a, a game that, unlike last week, they should be uh, winning and dominating. And I do think if they're really up and they're looking to run the clock out towards the late third quarter, fourth quarter, I, I would imagine that's A.J. Dillon. Could be. You know, on the field. <laughs> So I will chill with the villain. All right. And then uh, we have one final ride or die prediction for week two, Brooks. All right. DJ Moore, will he have at least 68 receiving yards in week two? That was his average from last year, but he only had 43 yards last week. He plays the Giants. I'm going to go die. Oh, man. Oh, DJ Moore. We're, we're back where we've been. His entire career. Always oh. needing more. A yeah. wise man once said. Oh, are you talking about yourself? Of course. Uh, <laughs> always Never bet on Baker. Bet against <laughs> Baker. So I will uh, I will triple up the die here. Die, die, die. <laughs> yeah. I'm. Uh, oh, I, I didn't vote yet. I don't care. You can vote still. Well, you just said triple it. Oh, uh, you mine. are tripled. Yes. Okay. Oh, just a real negative person today just Jason. a negative person that might come in in a tie-dye shirt next week with a victory <laughs> a try-dye there you go uh i'm gonna ride let's ride dj Moore. get it done 68 is is certainly doable uh but man baker was tough to watch outside of a what 75 yard touchdown to robbie anderson the longest touchdown of the week mm -hmm. I, i'm going with the narrative that it was Baker was feeling too dangerous against his former mm. team. He wanted to prove it too much that he, you know, like when you when you press too hard because you really really want something and you just you get out of all your normal habits. So I th I think that I'm going to choose to believe that. Well, Ryan Clark, who I think is outstanding on ESPN, was talking about a motion of going back and playing a former team and how you want that if you're in a physical position where you're. The emotion, you know, you're hitting harder. You're running around. As long as you're on your assignment, that emotion helps you. Von Miller, week one. Sure. But if you are a quarterback like Russ or Baker, that can break your focus. The right. emotions can be so intense. I thought it was an interesting comment, and it certainly rang true in week one. That was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. The Patriots placed Ty Montgomery on injured reserve. He had a 37% snap share, more than Ramondre Stevenson in week one, led the backfield in routes run and targets, and now on IR for at least four weeks. I imagine it will be four weeks. This caused me to look... At Ramondre in some potential trades. Sure. What's your reaction to this? You know, the negative things we saw from the Patriots offense combined with this opportunity. Yeah, I mean, th this was this was pretty big news because I was OUT on the Patriots backfield after week one, and it was predominantly because of Ty Montgomery. When you're splitting up the workload really evenly between three backs, that is not going to work. You can have success in a two-back system. We, we see that all the time. And these are two really good backs left over. So the question is, do you want Ramondre Stevenson? Do you want Damian Harris? Ramondre historically has been the more involved in the passing game of the two of them. However, Damian Harris had a 10% target share in week one uh, and also through training camp and preseason was involved in the passing game. So I'm actually a little higher on Damian Harris right now that would be the player that I think gets the uh, – I, I think both get a both bump Both go up. up. Both yeah. go up for sure. Uh, this next week they're playing against Pittsburgh, which is a good defense, but they will be without uh, T.J. Watt. I thought Mike might have a thought there on which guy he preferred. Uh, I'm, I was in agreement with Jason. Okay. Ken Walker will play in week two according to Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll. Okay. Right. or So he'll be active. Does that mean, like, are you concerned at all about his usage for Rashad Penny? Which uh, Penny the, looked pretty good. The 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 game, the, the analysis of Monday night's game had to be hijacked by the buffoonery of the Denver Broncos coaching staff. What we didn't really get to talk about was Rashad Penny 
his the the production wasn't there totally for fantasy football, but he looked fantastic, man. Like arm tackles are not taking Rashad Penny down. He just he looks like an absolute freight train. He still has the speed and the power if if he can just get through the line. Like if the offensive line has any sort of hole, he's going to get through. He's a really, really good running back. Yeah, he, he is. the The problem is going to be opportunities. Yes. He only had twelve carries. He did not quite get to that thirteen carry threshold that I was paying attention to with him. And now Ken Walker comes in. The opportunities. I don't think Ken Walker is going to come in and and be in a fifty fifty timeshare. Even I think he will be the backup, but he will take a few carries away. So. I do worry about Rashad Penny's upside since he's not really a pass catcher if he's losing a few, you know, of the of the first and second down carries. Considering they were ahead for the majority of the game, I'm surprised he didn't have more work. Well, they really wanted to uh, let Geno cook. They they really did. Uh, was that was that an in your face to Russ or was that just the new Seahawks? I don't know. I don't know if anybody ever thinks they're going to go in your face with Geno Smith. Pete, oh, I do he did not have put the, that past. He Pete did have Carroll. the quote of the year, though. Yes. I'm sure you heard it. it. Oh, oh I, I, I saw he, it happen live. I mean, where he came up with it. It was they were interviewing him, and he said, "People wrote me off, but I didn't write back, though." Yeah, mm. it was. That was pretty good. It was really quick. Uh, Joe Flacco will start Week Two against the Browns for the the Jets. Hapless New York Jets. Okay. The Browns. Miles Garrett going against Joe Flacco. Sign me up for Statue Joe. So I, as in, the, uh, yes. going against that yeah, yeah, Joe, gotcha. Damian Pierce, Lovey Smith came out and said, "We need to get Damian Damian more touches." There that's, it is. That's what we need to do. Yeah, yeah. but but you can't get Damian Pierce touches when you're just your your cup runneth over for Rex Burkhead. I told you I'm not that excited about Rex, and I do think they'll get more touches for Damian Pierce. They will. I agree completely, and I I started to think that if I had these players, I, I don't think I want either of them. Like I there are running backs, you know, out there that you might I don't I don't think I want to roster Damian Pierce. He's not I don't think the situation comes where he becomes the James Robinson of the last two years where he's just got everything. He's the pass catcher. He's the uh, you know the clear he's just volume crushing. And this is for a Texans team that usually is going to be down. He could become that because of performance. He could easily – I mean, the same way that you think eventually you're going to see Brees Hall break some long runs and then earn the backfield share, that can certainly happen with Rex Burkhead at 32 years old as your competition. Damian Pierce can come out, and if he had two 24-yard touchdowns in a game, it might be his backfield. Yeah, I just – I don't think that's going to happen. And it was it's just week one, but they played the Colts. I mean, they were in that game. Yeah, the Texans' defense looked pretty good, or the Colts' passing I mean, offense looked pretty bad. Whichever. I mean, you're in the game as as possible with a with a fifty fifty outcome. The Forty ers have signed Marlon Mack to their practice yeah. squad. Makes sense, but you never know with that oh, running I, back. I group. know it's not Marlon Mack. Latavius Murray to the Saints. That is practice squad. That one to me is interesting because if Kamara is dealing with a rib injury and they go out and sign another running back, that just says it might not be fully. They might be worried about it a little bit. Sure. That you know transactions are worth paying attention to because they're they're not just talk and misdirection. They're facts. What well, does the Marlon Mack signing? Well, that one. I mean, they need depth. Th that is a fact. Elijah Mitchell went on IR. And so they had to bring someone else in for depth. That's what I'm saying. Like they're saying Alvin Kamara is fine, and but then they go and sign another running back to the practice squad. Makes me go, is he? That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Quick break, and then we are back with the Thursday night preview. I do think that's – I mean, it's pretty bold saying you don't want Damian Pierce on your roster. I don't think it is that bold. He is the, – the the rushing opportunities, like the, the expected fantasy point opportunities last year for the Texans, who were one of the most run-heavy and neutral game script teams out there, was still bottom five in the league. So in order for him to be fantasy relevant, he has to have all of it, 
And I don't think that's going to happen. He didn't get all of it in college. He never really became the dude. That was why he was a little bit lower drafted. He was more of a mix in back. And they they love Rex Burkhead. Now, obviously, an injury can happen, right? If, if Rex Burkhead goes down to injury, then, of course, Damian Pierce will be very valuable because he will have the whole workload. But you could say that about every, you know, half the running back backups in the league. Okay. I, I think there's more opportunity there. And I, obviously, teams don't repeat exactly what they did last year every single season. We're going to see a lot of changes in the way that those numbers pan out. Let's get into it. Thursday Night Breakdown. Well, this will be fun. The Los Angeles Chargers at 1-0, traveling to Kansas City, to Arrowhead, to play the Chiefs, who are 1-0. That's going to be so much fun. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Chiefs minus four. The over-under is 54 and a half. Mm, almost. I know. And I am, while I am extremely excited about this game, I'm a bit crestfallen because I really, really wanted my Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen stack on oh. display. This is why you invested into AFC West weapons is because of games like this that are going to happen all throughout the year. I mean, every time the Chargers play the Broncos, Chiefs, or the Raiders, I'm excited. And that goes for every single matchup in the division. The winner will take control of the AFC West, and they split the series last year. The games lived up to the over-under. It was 30-24 and 34-28. to So very excited about that. Not having Keenan Allen on the road in Arrowhead is a problem. Like, it's easy on the fantasy side to say, well, you could take in a, you could go invest in Gerald Everett. You can go invest in Jordan, uh, Josh Palmer. But it is a problem just in a continuity of offense, first downs, move the ball down the field, compete with this team that put up, what, 40, 47, 49 points against Arizona? I don't remember the final score last week. I was too busy crying. 44, I think. Okay. So, you know, I do think that that is a little bit of a negative for opportunities for the Chargers, but... They're going to have to throw the football. Justin Herbert is very good. You saw DeAndre Carter last week from basically nowhere. Who I, I liked him a lot in Washington. I thought he was a very effective player. And he goes out there and he ends up taking the snaps away from like Jalen Guyton played three snaps or something in a game where they lost Keenan Allen. So, you know, if you're looking at DFS dart throws, he would be a name to mention. I agree completely. He's This is a game that you, here's what I know. Patrick Mahomes is not going to come out and suck, and Justin Herbert is not going to come out and suck. These guys are going to go at it, and you want pieces in this game. Mike Williams, he had a very down week one. Absolutely will be – I mean, hopefully everyone is starting him. If you are considering not starting Mike Williams, do yourself a favor and reconsider <laughs> because <laughs> he should be started. Uh, you know, last year – Against Kansas City, seven for 122 and two. He was the wide receiver one overall in four games without Keenan Allen. He's averaged eight targets, 75 receptions, 17 fantasy points per game. He is a must, must start player. Agreed. Josh Palmer has an opportunity. Would you, where, where are you viewing him this week in particular? He was one name that was a surprise mention on our fantasy MVP episode mm -hmm. in the event of injury. And he is a very good player. I, 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 he's very interesting. Uh, you know, we're 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 in the process of still fine tuning the rankings, getting those like as getting all the information. Really looking through last week, how we feel about these players this week. But we have the the one game where Josh Palmer was in, Keenan Allen was out, ninety four percent of the routes. He ended the game five for sixty six and one. He and so. Looking back at, you know, week one, you can say, well, Keenan missed, you know, the majority of the game and Josh Palmer didn't really do anything, but you weren't, they weren't game planning for it to be Mike Williams and Josh Palmer. I mean, when, when a player goes out to injury, it's kind of the, the, your plan goes, goes in the shredder and you just have to figure things out as you go. And I think that that was more a product. That's why Carter had more success than Palmer this, the, the past week. So I think Josh Palmer as a spot starter in your flex, well, not in your flex because it's a Thursday night, but you know that that flex type of a player, I think he is a a good option this let me, week. Let me put that to the test because I really like Josh Palmer. Okay. I think he I think he could have a good week. But whenever I made the like, 
okay, when I start him over this player, okay. I, I, I found it hard to go Josh Palmer. So um, let's go Josh Palmer or Curtis Samuel in Detroit. Ooh, that's a I'll good one. I'll take Palmer in the, in the matchup. Okay. Yeah. I went Samuel on that one. I go Curtis Samuel. Um, how about Josh Palmer or Brandon Ayuk? Oh, against Palmer. Yeah. Palmer. Palmer. That one was an easier Palmer. How about Julio Jones? Julio. Against New Orleans. I'll take Julio. Yeah. What about MVS in the same game? Marquez Valdez. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a really and good one. I'm gonna I'll go Palmer. I go Palmer as well. What about Olave? Against Palmer. Tampa Bay. Yeah, I've got Palmer one spot ahead of Olave. And the last name that I think is interesting is Drake London. Ooh. Man. I'm I'm on the Drake London side. He he had we didn't talk about it. He had yeah. an outrageously good What's game. What's the matchup? Uh for Drake London, he Remind is me. uh the Rams. So yeah, I'm not doing that. No, I'll call Palmer on this matchup where he could be there. There's a, a, a certainly percentage chance that he's the best receiver on the team tonight or on, on Thursday night. Right. There's there's a chance that that's a tough one between Drake who did. He had a very great debut. Yeah, I think it was like seven for 75 looked the part. Man. Don't give me him against the Rams, though, after a loss. Uh, Rams are at home after a loss. Weren't they at that home defense, before the loss? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying they don't have to go on the road here. They they get to sit at home, stew for a week, and come out and smash Atlanta. That's it. You know, yeah, yeah, Drake could be it's fine. Fair. Still, maybe they need to line him up against Ramsey, and he'll be really fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Ramsey, oof. But Gerald Everett, by the way, a great start in this one, in my opinion, needing to you know, throw the ball a lot in this game, and Eckler should bounce back as well. I hope so. I was a little bit worried about his week one usage. He was only, he only played in 50% of snaps, 44% route participation. Those were much lower than last year's numbers. Sonny Michel was out there. Sonny Michel was out there. Josh Kelly. Mm -hmm. that's so, they where, both looked terrible. They did. They did, but that's where – this is not definitely not a red alert on Austin Eckler by any means, but it's a – you need to pay attention that it, last year they tried to force one guy in, and they really wanted someone else to spell Austin Eckler. And now that there's possibly two players to get on the field and take opportunities away from him, which, I mean, Eckler is uh, incredibly hyper efficient. He dominates in the passing game. You know, he's still getting the goal line snaps and everything. But it's can he still be that top tier? like top three running back if there's two other guys that they want to get on the field. Obviously, in this game, high scoring, no Keenan Allen. Uh, Eckler should be great. I'm, I'm not worried about him like, oh, he's he's going to fall off, but just for what you drafted. And, and so I, I, I want to bring this question up to Andy. Mike, I know we talked about this, uh, and I know which side that you were on. What would you do if you had Austin Eckler? Would you would you trade him for Saquon Barkley after week one and what you saw, the utilization and the and – the, the look and feel of him. Who would you draft higher if this was a brand new draft right now? Austin Eckler. Yeah. I, one game is not going to persuade me from, I mean, you're looking at what, th two, three seasons of Saquon being, you know, having issues. Which offense do I want a piece of? You know, when I look at running backs, I want the Chargers times a million over Daniel Jones. There are going to be lots of games in which, Saquon may want to be wonderful, and they don't put him in a position to be, do so. So I would be, I'd very much be on the Austin Eckler side. Okay. I think it's very difficult, and I think you're that persuaded from one yeah. game. I mean, just I'm, I'm persuaded the fact that he was very healthy. Like the 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 problem with Saquon Barkley has been he's been hurt, and he's healthy. He was ready to go. I think he saw like a thirty plus percent target share, yeah. like absolutely outrageous, and. This is – it's not just a healthy Saquon Barkley. It's a healthy Barkley with with actual competent offensive minds around him, not Joe Judge calling the show. It's it's a player who – or a coach who's had success recently with having a high-powered offense. Yeah, he had seven targets, six receptions. I mean, I get it. And it's, it's Where it's this comes from, close. Andy, and, and, and the Foot Clan, is in our league of record I have Austin Eckler. And I was cons I was considering offering him for Saquon. I could not figure out who I wanted more because after week one, it, I mean, the explosiveness looked there. And and Sa you know, it's Saquon like, had a number three overall finish. In yes, the first five games of last year. What you saw says he could be in line to be the number one running back in the league this year. 
It's possible to me. Yeah, I, I, I need more. I need more than I, one game. I don't blame you. I didn't offer the trade, so. Yeah, it's been – it's he looked great. I'm not saying he didn't look great, but it was, you know, it was one game, and I need more before I sell out a guy that was a dominant fantasy force last year. Yeah. Um, all right, where are we? We have MVS, Sky Moore, McCole Hardman, Juju Smith-Schuster, Travis Kelsey. The pass catchers in Kansas City, unfortunately – you know, you know they're going to score a bunch of points, but you don't necessarily know who it's going to be. McCall Hardman, as unfortunately predicted, was heavily involved in this offense. Juju was heavily involved in the offense. MVS took a backseat to both of those guys. But out of Patrick Mahomes' own mouth, he said it's going to be a different guy every week, and I have no doubt that MVS will catch a long touchdown every third week and Sky Moore will flash and McCall Hardman... The thing about Hardman's involvement is that it was a lot of design stuff. It was a lot of, okay, we're going to run the Tyreek. All the Tyreek um, behind the line of scrimmage stuff was Hardman. Yeah. And they used that stuff in the offense. The the piece I want is clearly Juju. Um, I, am, I, I don't have the data in front of me. Maybe you can get it, Kyle, on like the first half or the first three quarters snap percentages. I don't remember if Juju was really involved late, but in the beginning of that game, Juju was very involved, He, but he only ended up playing 66% of the snaps, and it was a blowout. So I'm curious. He did have two fumbles. He had he had two fumbles, but he also had a 25% targets per route run. That was the guy that they were looking to in the passing game, and if history has shown us anything, is that coaches, players, teams, nobody cares about wide receiver fumbles. They can fumble 100 times and they still play. Run, running backs, you're dead. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I, I think he, Juju will be heavily involved in this game and is a very good start. What are you doing with Clyde? Well, you have to start him. Okay. I, I just wasn't sure. I mean, ten opportunities is not what you not what you want from a starting running back. Yeah, in the fourth quarter, Isaiah Pacheco got like ten carries because the game was out of hand. I, I don't think that this game's gonna be out of hand. Pacheco will get work in this game. He'll get he'll get I, I would bet like if you were betting the over under of ten opportunities. For Pacheco, would mm -hmm. you bet the under? I would bet the under in this one. I think he'll get up to 10. So what do you got for Clyde then? I think you you play Clyde because he had a great week and he was involved in the passing game and you, you're you not, you know, where you drafted him, you're not moving away from him. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, if, if you feel like Pacheco's going to get that much work. I think Clyde will get, you know, 12 to 13. So, so you feel like the, it's, that I mean, that's basically a 50-50 split. Yeah, except for uh, McKinnon's going to get work too. I have Clyde right now as my running back 19, so I've got him ahead of guys like David Montgomery, um, Cordero Patterson, Kareem Hunt, um, but he's not like you know top 10 running back for me this week. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm all about trading Clyde after a two touchdown week because we know that those are anomalous with Clyde. He's not been able to do that frequently, and they were both in the passing game, not the running game. McKinnon had the same amount of snaps as Clyde last week, so yeah, I I think that. He's a start, but you might want to cash in All right. or wait another week. He may have another good week yep. this week against the Chargers. Um, all right. Any other players from this game you guys want to talk about? Mm, nope. All of the rankings for week two going up on the website today, thefantasyfootballers.com. The start sit tool is up there. We get tagged in uh, approximately 45 million tweets every week about this guy or that guy why we gave you the start sit tool you can go and plug those players in and you can get a result and you can see not just who we would pick but why you yeah. can see you know who's at home what's the over under in the game what's the matchup the, yeah. it's an incredible tool if you haven't used it yet i mean do yourself a service e even when you're making your own decision if you wouldn't come and ask us on twitter just look at these it's a great way to just look at two players and their their situations their opportunities and just see them side by side. So avail yourself. And I know the psychology of fantasy players, and that is you need someone to pat you on the back for the decision you want to make and or blame somebody. So you can blame the start sit tool. <laughs> All right, into the mailbag we go. Mailbag. mailbag yeah. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or dial the voicemail hotline, Mike. Three zero two four six four TFFB. Let's begin with a voicemail. 
Hey, Fantasy Footballers, just wanted to say I'm loving the show. been listening to it for about a year now. Keep up the good work, guys. I have a question about a trade. In a full PPR league, Javante Williams for Najee Harris. Thank you, guys. <laughs> this is fun. Oh, that's that's, I mean, that's, that's Javante. Yeah, I, I, want, I, I want Javante over Najee. Correct. I'm in the same boat. Uh, not encouraged by the Pittsburgh offense, the Najee injury, the lack of targets, and then just going into the season, I think nine times out of ten I would have taken Javante anyway. Is well, Jav that's that's what's the surprising part and the fun part to me is that it, going into the season, pre, you know, Javante was back of the second round. Uh, Najee was back of the first round. So it's it's interesting to swap these guys pretty quick. The injury puts it over the top for me. Yeah. It would definitely be Javante. Uh, the fact that it's a full PPR, what's funny is Najee's been the receiving back, right? Like he was uh, up among the league leaders last year. And I, I don't. I think Javante catches more balls than Najee this year. Certainly in week one, it looked that way. 12 targets for Javante Williams. And only two for Melvin Gordon, which is... It's pretty, it's pretty different. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I don't know the reason for that. Like, I haven't gone back and watched. I don't know if either, Kyle, if you've looked at it, but every snap when Javante caught the ball, I didn't know how many of those were, you know, pass rush escapes versus design screens and things of that nature. But it's something to watch because if Javante has those opportunities, it takes him into a different you know, place as a running back, even though he's in a committee, mm -hmm. if he gets those amount, you know, that amount of work in the passing game, it's much more of the Eckler situation where they try to take Eckler off the field. They try to keep his snaps reduced, but the utilization so high and the pass catching so high that you're happy. All right. A few people sent this in. We'll go with, uh, the one from Keegan in Iowa, which Jags running back. Would you start week two matchup against the Colts, Travis Etienne, James Robinson. Oh man, <laughs> I oh man. I, I'm I'm going to I'll go first here. Okay, uh, I'm going to stick with Travis Etienne, uh, recognizing that Robinson looked great. Robinson um, is is a fine play, but the more valuable touches, the uh, two minute drills, the the uh, you know the goal line, the pass catching work, those where Travis Etienne was was the back in those situations in week one. Uh, and Travis Etienne also was about three little oopsie-whoopsie plays away from a really good uh, week one from – he had two different touchdown opportunities that were kind of uh, mishandled. So I, I think it's close, but I would go with Travis Etienne. Where do I, you guys go? I could see somebody making the argument that Robinson will, you know, continue to improve – after his first game, but I would lean ETN in this one. The matchup against the Colts, the likelihood that they are playing from behind and need more help out of the backfield. I'm going Robinson. Okay. And it's uh, – uh, goodness gracious, I can't believe that we are here. Uh, Coach Peterson after the game was, I mean, glowing about James Robinson of, of how happy he was with the performance and specifically saying like, the confidence to move forward, well, like what James Robinson was able to do in Week One, uh, like to be able to get the game plan going with even more Robinson. So I, I, I lean with him and his repaired Achilles. Do we know anything on uh, Darius Leonard, Kyle, for Week Two or Sha uh, Sha Shaquille Leonard? Not yet. Okay. Circling back to our matchup on Thursday night, I just wanted to share this. Um, who's this tweet come in from, Kyle? This one right here from Logan Bethel? No, no, no. The, uh, you shared one about the uh, next-gen stats on first-half snaps of the Chiefs players. Adam Teicher. Okay. Uh, at running back, Clyde and McKinnon were 50-50. Pacheco had four. Right. Uh, Juju, 39. MBS, 29. Hardman, 22. Watson and Moore combined for, what, 15? So, uh, again, you don't, you can't just prescribe that through the season, especially with a young player like Pacheco, but those are good more, information. Yeah, those are more valuable numbers for how that week one matchup happened. The second half was already garbage time. Yeah, if Clyde doesn't score, you, you're sitting there with a little bit – well, you're sitting there with your normal view of Clyde. Yep. So it was nice to see it happen. Uh, one of them was a little – one of those special Andy Reid – Mm -hmm. Yeah, shuffles. Yep. Shovel. 
passes, not a shuffle. You don't yeah. want the Andy Reid shuffle. You want the shovel. Well, yeah, it usually goes to Travis Kelsey, yeah. but it went to Clyde, which was nice. Thank, yeah, thank you for that, Mr. Reid. Julie in Minnesota, would you try to capitalize on Cordero Patterson's hot start and trade him away? I'm thinking of targeting the ETN manager after his slow week one. Full PPR league. I look at that trade as too neutral to do. I think Patterson is a really good player and yeah. certainly a really important part of this team, so I wouldn't do it. The The Patterson evaluation from this game is insanely difficult because he had a monster game. Like, he was... It, like I think that was the most carries. He had more carries in that game than he ever had last year. I, I, if I'm remembering correct off the top of my head. Fantastic for fantasy football. But if you look at the way that the game started, when Damian Williams was healthy and on the field, Damian Williams was out-snapping Cordero Patterson. Like The game plan was not to feature Patterson as, as a three-down running back. It, their hand was forced because Damian Williams left the game with a rib injury so early on. So it's, like I said, very, very difficult to gauge what the team wants to do or what they wanted to do at the beginning of week one. But now with the information that Patterson was so dominant, how do you well, go the, back to that? You know, it's worth saying you don't know how involved he would have been in the passing game. Maybe the game plan before he had to step in at running back was to involve him more there. Maybe, he's, maybe he was the goal line back. I mean, all we have is... Yes. Has he been effective for fantasy? He has been for the most part. Yeah, and, and last year, Mike Davis was very involved. Mike Davis had like 125-plus carries last year, and Cordero Patterson, we had this constant lack of belief. You know, last year, week two, he comes out, he was the running back five, and it was like, well, that was anomalous. That, you know, he's not going to keep being good. And then week three, he was the running back 22. It's like, okay, it was an RB2, but, you know, you sh shouldn't start him. Then he was the running back one. Then he was the running back 18, 13, seven. Like, he's really good. He's so, super yeah. involved. What would you do then? I think I keep Cordero ETN. Patterson here. I, I like ETN's explosive upside, and I'm almost always on the young, explosive athlete versus the aged vet. But these are fresh legs in a career it feels for Cordero like young, Patterson. Young explosive athlete versus old explosive athlete. Yeah, I mean Cordero looks good every I would time be worried, he touches the ball. I'd be worried more second half of the year on Cordero. Yes. That's and but also not in last year was Drake London, who we just said had a fantastic start to his his still NFL good, career. It's still good to me. Yeah, and, but Calvin Ridley, when he was there, Cordero was way better when Calvin Ridley yeah. was on the field. I mean, that was just – how many games was that? Was like it was three like, games. Probably no, four, five. four or five. Yeah. And uh, second-year Kyle Pitts and Marcus Mariota scooting his booty all over the field. And, yeah, I, I get it. I, it's, I have – I don't – I saying all of this, I'm just – I'm just Yes, you're laying out both sides. Of like, yeah. I don't know what to do with Patterson because both sides of the argument are very strong to me. Here's what I will say. I don't have a problem trying to capitalize on Patterson's strong week one. I don't think you're aiming high enough with Travis Etienne. Is that okay. fair? Yes, that's fair. I think I'd be happy to cash in on it if you're getting a value of – like I just don't think there's a guarantee built into Etienne yet. So I'd go for a player that I feel like there is more of a guarantee. Such as? What, let me ask you <laughs> – this This name's funny to me. How about uh, Zeke? Sure. Okay. I think I would do that deal, yeah. But I can't tell you. Uh, let me just. Can I get the spotlight? Oh. Oh. Hit the can lights. I, can Let's I get go. the lights, please? Hit the lights. I want to stare Maybe at this camera can. here. I don't know if we can do it or not. Okay. I just want to look at the Foot Clan because I've, <laughs> I'm have i heavily invested in Ezekiel Elliott. Yes, you are. I am terrified. <laughs> I am frightened. I am scared and I need help emotionally because I don't know what I got myself into and I thought I knew. So someone tell me that it's going to be okay. Here's it's not. Here's what oh, okay, stop. Sorry, Jason. sorry, I won't talk. Mike, you tell him it's going to be okay. Uh, I I can't promise it's going to be Just okay. Just lie to the man. I uh, no, I can't promise it's going to be okay, but watching Zeke on that uh, on that Sunday night, he was the best running back on the field. He averaged 5.2 yards he, a carry. He looked great. He looked healthy. They just didn't commit to the work. Now now that it's Cooper Rush, 
uh, like what happens to that offensive game plan? Does it get completely scaled back? Because go remember, go back to week one. I think it was week one last year when it was it was the Cowboys Bucks. They didn't run at all. They felt like their their best chance to beat the Buccaneers was they have to throw, 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 throw. Mm -hmm. So maybe they came in and they this is this is our offensive philosophy for this week. We aren't committing or over committing to the run. Even though Zeke was having great success, they just they had all the the, the plays drawn up to be pass heavy. Unfortunately, now, it's probably going to happen again this week, and then you're really going to be in a. a but is it with a backup quarterback? Yes, it's going to be a huge problem. They're playing Cincinnati, and Cincinnati shut down Najee last week. I mean, it was. If I'm Cincinnati, I'm playing against the run this week. I I just think, you know, it's, it's going to be scary for Zeke managers for a little while. Agreed. And I'm not saying he doesn't have it. I'm saying it's just a problem when Cooper Rush is your quarterback. You're going to get probably 50 to 55 percent completion percentage for Cooper Rush. You're going to have negative plays from Cooper Rush that puts you in a non-rushing situation. And you're non -rushing. going to Cooper Rush. Oh, yeah, I, was I know. There. I know. You nailed it's, it. It's a problem for this week. And so Give I the am, ball to Zeke. I'm just scared, Mike. And I know you invested yeah, your league I'm of in. record early pick on him. I traded for him in Dynasty to make a run for the title. And I just, I'm being honest with my feelings here. Oh, because the, the Foot Clan, we're, we we keep it straight. It's the forum. I know. We, we've got. And Jason, the, Jason helped me so much because right when I said, tell me it's going to be all right, he answered immediately. Well, it's not. Because week one was just a full confirmation of priors for Jason. That is true, but also <laughs> the Bengals matchup is tough. Uh, yeah. I I brought this up though. After these first couple weeks, the the schedule does open up very well for Dallas. Um, they have an easy schedule after this week, and um, you have the single ray of light that was the Halloween game from Cooper Rush, where he you know had sixty percent completion percentage, wasn't dink and Duncan was he looked good. I mean. You know, who are, who are those two backups they used to have? Do you remember the names? Oh, yeah. The guys that started after the injury to oh. Dak. And it Garrett was a, Gilbert. Yeah. Garrett Gilbert. And? There was another one. Oh, you got you to gotta effort that because that name's going to bring back some memories for uh, people. Uh, Tanucci. Danucci. Yeah, Danucci. There it is. Yeah. Oh. Ben Danucci. Ben, ben Danucci. Danucci. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they don't have them to turn the ball over to. <laughs> All right, well. They're glad as well. <laughs> Here's a final question for the show today. Instagram from Andy Dubs 34 Should I trade Michael Thomas? Michael Thomas? For Darren Waller. My oh. tight end right now is Cole Komet. I don't mind that. I don't mind it either. I, I do think Michael Thomas is going to have his games, mm -hmm. but I think Landry will. I think Olave will. I'm, I'm in on Michael Thomas moving forward, but if you can – and I'm not out on Cole Komet, but if you can uh, take that later, you know, like uh, mid late round pick and, and stabilize your tight end position, I would do it. Yeah, I, I have in our league of record, I've got TJ Hawkinson, right? Just, oh man. Are you looking, for, sol are you looking for solutions with him? I, I, and, I, and all I'm thinking is, well, I can't, I can't win with Hawk. I've got to find uh, an answer, but there's, there are so few. It's like Mark Andrews and, and uh, Travis Kelsey. Maybe, what about what about my guy? Maybe Kyle Pitts, but that's the thing is like a Kyle Pitts or a Darren Waller who had bad week ones. This is where you do try to capitalize with a guy that you drafted in the eighth round that hit. Yep, and you try to swing so that you keep your uh, third and fifth round picks that you know you 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 know took instead of those tight ends, and then you go and trade for one of those tight ends, I think it's a better way to win. And, yeah, Andy, you and I should talk. Yeah, the highest percentage of snaps not lined up at the tight end position in week one wasn't even Kyle Pitts, and his were super high. It was Darren Waller. 81% of his snaps not even lined up as the tight end, just lined up as a wideout. Nice. So something to pay attention to for a bounce back week. A couple reminders here. Make sure you drop it like it's hot. Oh, yeah. 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 If, Especially week one. Yeah. So that is a reminder to everybody listening to check the waivers to see who is dropped by teams that are probably panicking, grabbing players that produced in week one. And you're going to find some names hit the waiver wire that you'll be like, oh, my goodness. Like Cole Komet's going to hit the waiver wire. Oh, and, everywhere. And if you need to fix your tight end position, I still think he has a potential fix. I, I know it was a bad week one. I think people are reacting stronger to that than Darnell Mooney. 
which look, M- Mooney could you, hit your you, waiver wire. People do crazy things in week one. If you're not checking to see who was dropped, then then you're missing out on some gold. Did you guys happen to browse our league of record? I'm looking at a waiver. Right now. Did I, you guys spend on anybody this week? No, because I, be, I listened to Mike the Fantasy Hitman right and stashed Jeff Wilson on Sunday. Oh, did you really? Yeah. You stashed Jeff Wilson before the game. Yes. Listening to your own advice. Uh, that's right. And then praising yourself, I presume? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was so many self in front of the, In front of the mirror, just you did it. <laughs> yeah. You did it, Mike. You ever see that uh, Alex Rodriguez picture with the mirror? <laughs> no. Where he's just giving himself a big old smooch. Are you wearing the green um, suit that, that Russell Wilson decided to walk into the the I stadium did, with? No, because I did not see it. You don't subscribe to uh, the Goober blog? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What? With the bow tie? What? That guy's the worst. <laughs> it's a shiny suit, Mike. All right. I'm looking it up. It's a big time. All right, uh, Jason, did you spend any fab this week? Uh, it looks like I did. I uh, got What's a, wrong little, with this suit? a little cheap. A uh, little cheap uh, bid on Devin Duvernay, just in case That's nice. That's nice. he's more involved than we think. I tried to. There's get... nothing wrong with the suit, Mike. It's the man underneath. Yeah, that, that's fine. But that's the way you walk in that suit says a lot. He looks like he's going to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance with that suit. He's, it's a mint. It's a minty yeah. color, right? I'm in with the sunglasses. I'm in inside. on this suit. That suit's hot. Now go you watch him walk in it. Mike loves Russell Wilson. Yeah, I mean that makes sense because he's uh, uh, unlimited. I'm... I'll say I'm also a good Did Ross pick up Jeff Wilson on waiver wire too? Probably. Nah, he never would. All right. That is going to do it. Back with the matchup starts of the week. Boom, boom, kicker. Never not working. A whole lot more on tomorrow's Jam Pack show. Do not miss it. Talk to you then. See you on Spotify Live, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.